Hello guys, in this video we're gonna talk about synthetase, the enzyme that links amino acid to tRNA. We're gonna talk about its structure, classes, and role. When tRNA binds with its anticodon to the mRNA codon, it brings with it the corresponding amino acid attached to the 3' OH of tRNA terminal adenosine. But how does the amino acid get attached to the tRNA? Well, it's done with the help of an enzyme called amino acyl tRNA synthetase. This enzyme catalyzes a two-step reaction. First, the carboxyl function of the amino acid must be activated by adenylation. Then, the activated amino acid can be attached by its carboxyl function to the 3' OH of adenosine of tRNA. This is the amino acylation of tRNA. Let's zoom at the amino acid attachment zone. We have the tRNA in pink and the amino acid in blue. As you can see, the attachment of the carboxyl function of amino acid to the OH of adenosine allow the formation of an ester linkage. Some attachments are made to the 3' OH of adenosine of tRNA and others are to the 2' OH, but move later to 3' OH. Now I'm gonna detail the two reactions. First, the activation reaction is catalyzed by specific amino acyl tRNA synthetase, also called activating enzyme. The, the first step involves the condensation of an amino acid and ATP to form the enzyme bound intermediate amino acyl adenylate or amino acyl AMP with pyrophosphate as product. The amino acyl AMP intermediate doesn't dissociate from the synthetase, rather it stay bound to the active site of the enzyme. The second step is the transfer of the amino acyl group of amino acyl AMP to a particular tRNA molecule on 3' or 2' OH to form amino acyl tRNA. The sum of these activation and transfer steps is amino acid plus ATP plus tRNA gives amino acyl tRNA plus AMP plus 2 inorganic phosphate. The equivalent of two molecules of ATP are consumed in the synthesis of each amino acyl tRNA. So the enzyme tRNA synthetase has two sites, the activation site and the editing site. Both are close to each other and they function as a double sieve. The acylation site or the activation site rejects amino acids that are larger than the correct one. And the editing site, also known as the hydrolytic site, cleaves the activated species that are smaller than the correct one. We said previously that amino acids are attached by the COH to the 3' end of tRNA, and others are attached to the 2' OH. Well, this depends on the class of synthetase. The 20 amino acyl tRNA synthetase are divided into two classes, 1 and 2. It's the class 1 that acylate the 2' OH of tRNA, while the class 2 acylate the 3' OH. Class 1 are mostly monomers, while the class 2 are mostly dimers. The CCA part of the acceptor stem in class 1 is in hairpin structure, while the CCA part of the acceptor stem in, uh, in class 2 is in hel helix structure, uh, in helical structure. Um, class 1 bind ATP in an extended conformation. You see how the black structure is extended, while the class 2 bind ATP in a band Confirmation. See how the, the black structure is bent here? Uh, if I want to mention some of the synthetase of class 1, um, I can mention the glutamic, the glutamine, leucine, etc. You can uh, memorize the glutamic, while in class 2, you can memorize the threonine, for example. Okay? Since there are 20 amino acids, there are 20 amino acyl tRNA synthetase. So these enzymes are highly specific for a given amino acid and they rarely incorporate a wrong one. But how does the correct amino acid and tRNA match up? 
Let's take the example of threonyl tRNA synthetase. This enzyme is specific for threonyl. How can it avoid coupling the incorrect amino acid like serine and valine? We need to take a look at their structure and compare them to threonine. Both the serine and threonine have OH as side chain. Valine doesn't. The structure of the amino acid binding site of threonyl tRNA synthetase reveals how valine is avoided. So let's take a look at this binding site. The enzyme contains a zinc ion that bound the enzyme with two by two histidine and one cysteine. The specific amino acid for this enzyme, threonine, fits in the amino acid binding site because it coordinates to the zinc through its amino group and its side chain OH, which is linked to aspartic acid of the enzyme via a hydrogen bond. Valine cannot, ma cannot match with threonyl tRNA synthetase because it has a methyl group in its side chain with no hydroxyl group. Thus, it cannot participate in this interaction mentioned earlier and it's excluded from the active site of the enzyme and therefore it doesn't become adenylated and transferred to threonyl tRNA synthetase. But the mistake could occur with serine because it has a hydroxyl group. So what happens if the tRNA is mischarged with serine? Well, a rapid hydrolysis takes place, releasing serine and free tRNA. And this is because threonyl tRNA synthetase contains a functional site other than the activation site called the editing site. This site recognizes serine only and threonin will not fit because it has an extra CH3. So the editing site provides an opportunity for the synthetase to correct its mistake. It's like a proofreading system. And because these two sites are close to each other, the amino acylated CCA can swing out of the activation site into the editing site without dissociating from the synthetase, which improves fidelity with low cost and time and energy. The editing site is not present in all tRNA synthetase. It only exists when the enzyme needs an additional mechanism to distinguish between amino acids, like in the case of threonyl tRNA synthetase described earlier. Some enzymes, like tyrosyl tRNA synthetase, doesn't possess an editing site because it doesn't need it to discriminate tyrosine from phenylalanine. The OH on the tyrosine ring enables tyrosine to bind to the enzyme 10,000 times more strongly than phenylalanine. So far, we saw together the classes of synthetase, their role, their structure containing an active site and some of them an editing site for proofreading. Now we will see together how do synthetase choose their partner tRNAs. Well, some synthetase recognize their partner tRNAs primarily on the basis of their anticodon, although they may also recognize other aspects of tRNA structure like the acceptor stamp. Let's consider, for example, the structure of the complex between threonyl tRNA synthetase in blue and the partner tRNA denoted tRNA THR or tRNA threonin in pink. The CCA arm of the transferred tRNA extends into the enzyme activation site, so can threonin be well positioned in the activation site. The enzyme also interact with the anticodon loop where the bases of the anticodon participate in hydrogen bonds with the enzyme. Synthetase also recognize various features of tRNA molecule. Let's take for example the enzyme glutaminyl tRNA synthetase. The structure of this enzyme shows many interactions with both the anticodon loop and the acceptor stem. In addition, some interactions are made near the elbow of the tRNA molecule, particularly with the base pair formed by C in position 10 and C in position 25. And that's it for today.
In the next video, we're going to talk about the eukaryotic and the prokaryotic ribosomes. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe.